Well, I'm Daniil and welcome to the Amuna Project. We here at the Amuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to uh, education, inspiration, information, guidance, counseling. And uh, I want to talk about a concept that occurs uh, uh, several times in the Torah. Uh, the stiff-necked people, the expression stiff-necked. Uh, the first time it occurs is uh, uh, short is, is that in that brief period between the time that the Creator gives Moses the uh, the luchas, the tablets of the Ten Commandments, uh, and before the time that Moses sees the uh, Israelites uh, doing the sin of the golden calf, the Chet Egel. And it says in uh, Exodus chapter 32, verse 9, I have seen this people, and behold, they are a stiff-necked people. Now, usually, stiff-necked um, is understood as being um, uh, stubborn. Uh, it's an idiom that, re uh, that um, uh, conjures the image of someone uh, refusing or being somehow unable to bow down, in this case, bow down to the will of God. Uh, stubborn, intractable. But I want to mention uh, a commentary by Sforno. This is uh, Ovadia Ben Yaakov Sforno, is a medieval commentator uh, who lived in northern Italy the last quarter of the 1400s, the first half of the 1500s. And he has a very interesting uh, view of this. Uh, rather than being stubborn, he says, um, I want to get the quote here. Their neck is like an iron sinew and they will not turn to listen to the words of any righteous teacher in any manner. Hence, there is no hope that they will repent. So, Sforno is saying, he's commenting on why Moses broke the tablets. He's saying the stiff-necked thing is that they were so, they were teetering on the, on the precipice of, of, of doom. And uh, Moses saw this, and he, he realized that they were, they were unable to, to listen to, to words. They couldn't listen to, to any tzaddik, any, any righteous person, any leader. They needed uh, something dramatic. And the breaking of the tablets was that, was that thing that what they needed, and it worked. Um, as we've reviewed in uh, previous videos, the first step, in the tshuva process, the first step in turning yourself around is acknowledging that you are doing something wrong. You acknowledge uh, the sin, the hakoras hachet. Because without that, you're not going to get started. If you don't even realize you're doing something wrong, you're going nowhere. Uh, so in order to bring this about, um, this uh, shock treatment uh, was required. It was something very dramatic. And, and it worked. The entire Jewish people um, did tshuva. They turned themselves around. Uh, after, after the breaking of the luchas, after the, the sin of the golden calf, there was not some breakaway sect, you know, the golden calfers. You, were, you, were, you didn't see Jews running around handing out tracts, Jews for the golden calf. It was complete tshuva, and everyone uh, turned to God the real God, and it took the breaking of the luchas to, uh, to bring this about. Uh, somebody who is blind to his own shortcomings, uh, who refuses to accept uh, criticism, reproof, even if it comes from a very holy man, that person, uh, um, he's got little chance of doing tshuva. To sin, is tragic. To ignore the sin, that's reprehensible. That's, that person is pretty far gone. And until they realize what they're doing is wrong, they're not going to do tshuva, because that's the first step. And uh, in, in a very dramatic way, um, Moses uh, gave them that shock treatment, gave them something that was very, very shocking. Um, one can imagine the reaction uh, if someone, God forbid, was to go into a synagogue and take a, a Sefer Torah a scroll, a Torah scroll, and rip it uh, in front of everybody and throw it down onto the ground. Uh, 
I, I can't even imagine that the shock, the outrage uh, that would happen. It's, 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 it's a very dramatic thing. Um, even the most assimilated Jew, even the most secular Jew, would be at least upset at that. Uh, it's a shocking thing. It's a it's a terrible chol Hashem, and it's something that gets uh, almost every Jew right in the heart. Um, even someone who is who is very very assimilated, even someone who claims to be an atheist, and I'm reminded of a story that uh, that uh, Rab Rabbi Tuvia Singer said he was giving a, a lecture at some uh, synagogue somewhere. And it was in the shul itself. And afterwards, a gentleman came up to him, this older guy, and he says, oh, Rabbi, it's wonderful words, wonderful, fantastic. I agree with everything you say. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm an atheist. And if I remember the story correctly, uh, Rabbi Singer said to this guy, really, you're an atheist? He says, yes. He's quite proud of the fact. Yes. He says, tell you what, um, I'll give you $1,000. I'm standing in front of an iron coat, in front of the cabinet where the Torah scrolls. I'll give you $1,000. If you take out a Torah scroll and throw it on the ground, the guy says, "No." He says, "No, really. I'm I'm good for it. Here, I'll write the check. I'm good for thousand dollars. It's yours. If it was me, if someone asked me to throw down a Bhagavad Gita uh, to the ground, I'd throw it down for free. And here, and, and if you're an atheist, this is the biggest lie. This Torah is the biggest lie there is. I'll pay a thousand bucks. Throw it on the ground. The guy says, "No, I would never do that." And uh, if I remember the story correctly, Rabbi Tuvia Singer uh, goes to the guy. He goes, "Yeah, some atheist." Um, there's that spark, that Yiddish neshama, that Jewish soul uh, inside every Jew that, that recognizes certain truths. And uh, sometimes it's asleep. Sometimes it becomes uh, confused and goes somewhere else. But given the right notice, given the right shock treatment, uh, it will come alive and it will Bezrus Hashem with God's help, turn around, uh, just like uh, the stiff-necked people that we are. Uh, sometimes it takes a little prompting, like uh, Moses throwing down uh, the tablets, or someone doing something equally shocking that wakes us up uh, as Jews. It is said that anti-Semitism creates Jews. This is another example. Um, of that. We're going to be doing more uh, stories along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Immuno Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you so much.